Welcome to the Horse Trailer Post podcast, the show where we cover anything and everything related to the horse trailer industry. I'm your host, Brad Heath, owner and operator of Double D Trailers. With over 25 years of experience in the horse industry, I'm excited to bring you the latest news, tips, and insights into everything equine. Can't wait to share my passion for horses and horse safety with all of you. So saddle up and join me every other week for the Horse Trailer Post podcast. All right, guys. So thanks for joining us on uh, the podcast today. We have Jamie. She's the owner of Hay Bales and Bar Bales, which provides fitness programs and educational resources for equestrian athletes. Jamie's a certified personal trainer, youth exercise specialist, a recreation therapist, and equestrian athlete herself. So Jamie, welcome to our podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. We'll start out. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What inspired you to merge your uh, your two worlds of equine and fitness? Yeah. So I started my company about three years ago. It was obviously COVID. And so I used to work as a recreation therapist, an equine assisted recreation therapist. So we would use horses as a source of therapy for kiddos with disabilities. Okay. But obviously... COVID happened and, you know, people weren't coming anymore. So I unfortunately lost my job back then. And, you know, I've always been into fitness. I've been doing this for more than a decade now. And I really realized that when I started really paying attention to intentionally training my body, how much that changed when I was in the saddle. So there was a period of time where I, um, I took a long time. I took a long break um, from riding, obviously college and everything like, you know, people just, we just don't have the money or the resources to, to keep riding. Um, but when I got back on the horse, I was like, huh, why do I feel like I'm a better rider, even though I've stopped riding for a little bit. And then I thought back, I like, you know, I was like, you know what? I think it's because I started training my body. I started fitness training. I started lifting weights. I started doing you know, more cardio and stuff like that. So, you know, three years ago, I was like this, I think that this is a space that our equestrian world is lacking. Um, People not really realizing that they are athletes and they need to cross train out of the saddle. So it, you know, this just was a passion project. I just decided to, you know, what, what have I got to lose? Right. So Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, went ahead and created my company and yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a journey. It's been awesome. Uh, the best thing about, you know, the three years so far is just meeting all the equestrians from all over the world, like that building a community and educating people about how important fitness training is, has been really the highlight of, of the past three years. Okay. Great information. So, uh, what's some common challenges that you've noticed equestrians face when it comes to their riding and fitness level? And, and then how do you address those challenges? Well, especially, you know, in the last, probably (laughs) in the probably last five years, um, you know, the emergence of the phones, TikTok, Instagram, you know, everyone's working from home. Everyone's always on their computer we see a lot of postural issues with a lot of riders, you know, not just when they're on the horse, but also when they're, you know, just living their daily lives. A lot of people don't realize that they're really, you know, hunched forward. A lot of the times they have what we call a forward head posture. And this is all due to, you know, being on our phones all the time, being on our tablets. Um, So if I've realized that, especially with the youth too, um, I've realized that postural issues has been a, has been one of the bigger um, issues that I've seen with equestrians, no matter what discipline you ride, you need to have an upright posture. You need to have your shoulders rolled back. You need to have a a strong and stable core or midline. Um, So that's one of the things that I have really, really noticed. And people don't, a lot of people don't, aren't really aware of their bodies until they feel some sort of pain. But, you know, we want to nip that in the bud and we want to help uh, clients strengthen their bodies before they, you know, before it gets to that point. So I focus a lot on um, corrective like exercises to help the, uh, to help their upper, pos- upper, upper upper body posture. I focus a lot on midline control or core control. So everything from your neck down to your pelvis 
is your core, is your trunk. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, every, all your power comes from your core. Your posture comes from your core. Your lower body strength comes from your core. Your upper body posture also comes from your core. So my, in my programs and my training, I focus, um, I focus a lot on that. It helps if we don't press the mute button. So you work with a, <laughs> a lot of uh, different age groups, right? Youth rider, mm -hmm. older yeah. equestrian. So how do you, yeah. what's your approach on training programs for those different age groups, considering the unique fitness requirements? So for a lot of the, um, a lot of the older a lot of the older riders, I will implement a lot of more low impact programs. So things that, you know, exercises that don't require a lot of jumping. So, you know, to protect their knees. Um, so I just, I have not released my youth program yet, but it's in the works. And that program, because I've worked with youth for a lot of years, and I know, understand how their attention span is like this. <laughs> Right. I'm sure you know as you have as you have a toddler, their attention span is so short. Um, so for my youth program, I'm in the works. Like I'm, I'm preparing to to release that later on this summer. Is we're going to incorporate a lot of games. I believe as a recreation therapist through my training, I believe that play and games is where kids develop a lot of that um, fine motor, gross motor skills. It's where they develop a lot of the cognitive skills. So through Fit, through, through my youth training fitness program, I'm going to, I'm going to incorporate a lot of games. They'll be fun. They won't strictly be, you know, oh, we're going to do 10 reps of squats or, or stuff like that. You know, I'm going to integrate ex the exercise into the program, mm -hmm. but yet keep it fun and keep it, you know, keep the kids entertained. So, you know, that's kind of um, the difference between training different types of um, client groups for, for the adult amateurs, um, uh, what one thing that I've noticed a lot is that they a lot of them lack a lot of cardio fitness, a lot of cardiovascular endurance. Um, you know, so for for that group, I will do a lot more um, cardio. I'll do a lot more hit training. Um, but yeah, so there's there's definitely a different approach to uh, training different age groups. I like the idea of the games. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So one of the questions that I had in your experience, how does the mental aspect of both fitness and riding play a role in optimal performance? Before I uh, hopped onto this podcast, I was actually like typing up some notes and I was like, I really want to talk about this because I have suffered from like mental health issues throughout my whole life. And it wasn't until I found fitness it's when it completely changed my life. Um, you know, when a lot of people think about fitness, a lot of when a lot of people think about exercise, they always, you know, correlate that to improving your phys physical health. Obviously, right? I mean, yes, exercise will improve your physical health, will improve your physical health, well being. But there's actually more and more healthcare providers that are prescribing exercise as a like quote unquote medicine to help people with. A lot of mental health struggles. Um, for me, my approach to exercise is I like to view it as a it's a holistic thing. So we're not only are we improving our physical wellness, but we're using exercise to to improve our mental wellness and our mental mental health too. And you know, writing I always say is as physical as it is mental. If you've got a mental block. No matter how strong you are, no matter how talented or skilled you are, you won't be able to perform at your highest level. But and but then here's where you know exercise comes to play. You know it helps when we're working out, when we're lifting, when we're running. It increases our endorphins. It makes us feel good. It makes us feel good on the inside, um, and that's what really helps you in the saddle. So my training approach is, is, it's very holistic and it's very much, it's very much, you know, we're focusing on our physical health, but we're also paying a lot of attention to our mental health too. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I, I have my own issues that I struggle with. And, you know, if I don't exercise three, four times, five times a week, I'm in the gym almost daily. 
it uh i yeah. can i don't like it i'm like i gotta go back to the gym you know i've got to go work out so <laughs> uh it, it really helps me you know function through the day now i was looking yeah, sure. your, on your site you have quite a few you've got a lot of different programs so can you tell mm-hmm. us more about those programs the resources that you offer and you know sort of how that works to walk us through that yeah so i have different programs that are geared towards riders of different levels so i have a beginner uh, beginner rider program so a bit for in my opinion um beginner riders they normally they usually lack the, uh, cardiovascular endurance the most So that's why for beginner programs, I focus a lot on building their cardiovascular endurance Um, for intermediate riders. So anyone that's been riding for, you know, three plus plus years, they should already have a good um, cardio foundation. So that's where we focus more on isolated strength training. So training our specific body parts. Um, And then we move on to professional riders. So I have a professional rider program. So we already assume that professional riders are very well conditioned. Their cardio endurance is great. You know, they have that physical strength and everything. So for professional riders, I focus more on recovery. We we focus more on mobility work and we focus more on stretching, you know, to prevent injuries from happening from them riding, you know, so many different horses a day. Um, So, yeah, I have different programs that cater towards different riders at different levels. I also have a boot camp that's actually coming up next week. So I host a boot camp every month. It's a two week boot camp. It's it's pretty intense. Um, I I say, you know, it's used to jumpstart your fitness routine or it's for someone who, you know, have been working out for a while, but just want to spice things up, switch up their routine a little bit. Um, That boot camp is actually the most it's the most popular program just because it's, you know, it's the most affordable. It only takes you two weeks. Um, so that's for any riders. It's for, you know, it's for any level of riders. It's for any discipline riders. You can, um, it really challenges your physical strength and your mental toughness too, because it is so, it is so challenging. Um, so I offer that uh, once a month. Um, I also have a core program. So that's an eight, this is, this core program is an eight week uh, core strength and stability. I call it a series. Um, It's everything is evidence-based. So the whole program is built on scientific research. You know, it's obviously a progressive training program. So it begins when it starts week one, it's the easiest. And then to to week eight, it's like, you know, that, you know, it's, it's obviously um, the most hardest part of the, of the program, but everything is, you know, I've spent months and months and months researching and doing, you know, reading yeah. a ton of research articles on building this program. And there's actually a research article that has proved that riders who participated in an eight week core program actually performed better at shows than riders that did not. So wow. I really, I use that research article as kind of like a foundation for the program so you know to really showcase to riders that hey it's not just me that's saying all these things yeah. i'm not making these things up there's actually scientific research and data to prove you know what i'm trying to to educate you guys on um so yeah in, in a nutshell that's that's all the that's the programs i provide and i'm also like i told you earlier i'm working on a youth program right now too yeah, that sounds cool. So if I wanted to do your boot camp, is that something that I would attend in person? Is it all virtual? How does that work? Yeah. So the good thing about my program is that everything is virtual. Since, you know, since I built this business during COVID when everything right. was virtual, <laughs> everything, all my programs, all my courses are done online. Um, so you'll once you sign up, you'll get a link to set up an app. And then that app will have all the workouts um, loaded into your calendar. You'll just pull up the, the workout and then it will all be on your phone. There'll be videos showing you, you know, how to perform those exercises. And then it'll also, you know, state the reps and sets as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I want to check some of that stuff out. So you mentioned that you had made written some notes up. Uh, anything on your notes that you want to share that we've overlooked or just on your mind. Uh, and that's no, okay. I think that's, <laughs> I mean, it's I think okay that's... if not. 
<laughs> and we covered like the general things okay. that I wanted to talk about. No. Yeah. Uh, I did see this uh, last thing. I noticed that you have on your site, it's Matthew 17, 20. Would you like to share how this verse and your faith plays a role in your business? Yeah. So when I started, obviously, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't in an ideal position. Um, But when I started my business, you know, this verse kept popping up in my head and I was, it kept it really kept me going, even though when I wanted to give up, I'm like, nobody's going to want, you know, nobody's going to want to buy programs from me. Nobody's going to listen right. to me. I'm, 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 like, I'm nobody. I'm literally, you know, and the verse, it says a mustard seed. I'm like this small, right. but it's because of this verse. Um, you know, I kept my faith and I'm like, you know what? I can move mountains as my faith is this small. I am this small, but you know, I know that I know that God's got me and I know that, you know, if I, all I need to do is keep believing in him and keep, keep my faith in him. And, you know, even though I'm such a small part of this world, I will be able to, to move mountains. So yeah, it's been a, it was definitely the, the verse that really propelled me to keep, you know, move me forward to, to, uh, you know, making my business and, you know, having it become what it is today, it's, it's really, it's really, really a blessing. And I, and I say this all the time, like, I don't take any of this for granted at all. Like the fact that people, the fact that I have like 50 something thousand people that want to like consume my content, it's, it's absolutely, it's unbelievable to me. (laughs) So yeah, my definitely, definitely that verse and my faith has, has brought me this far today. Well, amen to that. Very encouraging. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for yeah. uh, taking the time to be on our podcast. I've learned a lot. I had no idea that there was such a thing as equestrian fitness. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I like to say that I coined the term. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I like it. So I just encourage our listeners, uh, visit Jamie's website. That's haybalesandbarbells.com. And again, hay bales with an S, the letter or uh, the word and, A-N-D, barbells.com. So check her out and sign up for uh, one of the courses and the classes. And hey, I think everyone will be glad they did. Thanks so much, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me. 